anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Doing all right. How are you? All right, we yeah. already asked you ready, that. Ready, ready, to, ready to do another episode of Scarlet and Grade, or we talk no. about how states last week. Oh, no. wait. Nope. They, they, they were on a bye week. On a bye week. No, we're, we're actually so we're doing... Do some, go, something no, fun. You, you go ahead. I'm going to do this. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to do something fun here. We are going to talk about our favorite subject, Jared, and that, yeah. and, and that is conference realignment here. Yeah. Uh, big changes, big changes as the uh, PAC-2 tries to stay alive here, and yeah. they add in um, Colorado State, Fresno State, San Diego State, and Boise State. A lot of states here. That's... They're, they're just going to be called the PAC State. I mean, isn't isn't everybody two. a state now? Minus two. Just who is it? No, I'm just minus twoing you. That's all. Just boo. I'm booing the joke. That's all. Okay, I'm booing I gotcha. the joke. No, it was good. It was good. I mean, no. sorry, no fun, Jerry. Sorry, oh, no fun. Sorry. All right, so. With this announcement here, obviously uh, the the pack whatever is going to can I, try to get more team. It's going to try to get more teams in here. Rebrand, uh, rebrand to simply the pack. The pack, sure. I still like the pack state, but I'm that. That's my recommendation. Ooh, six pack. six pack. Yeah, but that they have to. So note, I have a couple notes before we start today. The first got to get up higher. Yeah. The first numbers. note to be to be recognized as an FBS conference, they have to have eight. So like you could do the six pack or the pack six, but you'd have to immediately change it because they have to get to eight. They have to get to eight to be a conference. I believe they're currently on like some sort of two year grace period right now. And for what it's worth, the teams that Kyle mentioned joining the Pac-12, that doesn't technically take effect until the 26-27 season. So they will not be joining next season. They'll be joining the season after. So I'm going to pull up the chart here. Yep. Pull up the and chart. Jared loves his charts. I do love my chart. The visual elements. I, I'm trying here. Um, the, <laughs> we're calling this our conference realignment prediction for 2030. The, the years picked it a bit. There's a bit of logic to it, but the point here is that we're, we're calling what you're currently seeing the current state. This is actually the current state circa the 2026 season when the official pack move is official. Um, now, as stated, they need to get to eight. Now, why 2030? The Big Ten TV contract ends uh, after the 29 uh, 30 season. That's why I chose 2030. Uh, the SEC TV contract ends at 30 uh, at 33 34. M maybe most importantly, um, the ACC. The ACC, although their TV contract runs through 2036, the conference media rights contract, so that every team, every university size a, signs a media rights deal with their conference. And then the conference negotiates the TV contracts. So the ACC TV contract runs to 2036. However, the conference media rights deals with the schools only runs to 2027. So, so what does that mean, Jared? 
that means it's way easier for Florida State and Clemson and whoever else wants to leave the ACC to leave the ACC after the 2027 season. So I've picked the year 2030. The, the, the year 2030 is somewhat arbitrary, somewhat well thought out. I wouldn't focus too hard on the actual year. This could be give or take two years. This could be 2028. This could be 2032. Um, I think we'll start to see movement in 2028. But I don't think this round of conference realignment will really end until like 2032. I think there'll be a lot of moving parts for a few years, much like what we're, what we're seeing right now, where teams, you know, we're still in that shuffle from what started when Texas and Oklahoma and USC and UCLA moved. And, you know, we're like I said, we're still seeing the trickle down of that. So I don't think this will this will be much the same. Um, again, I could have put 2032. I could have put 2028. Let's not focus too hard on the year. Let's focus on what's important, which is which are the teams. Sure. All right. Kyle, on the year 2027. Although the announcements will probably come before this, although I think you might not see teams actually move until 2027. But I think that's the that's the last year of the ACC as we currently know it, which, quite frankly, um, still isn't the ACC we totally once knew. Not that, you know, Maryland and Rutgers were devastating blows. But... I, I think the ACC falls apart officially uh, on the onset of the 2027 football season. If not sooner, maybe sooner, but not later. I think Clemson wants out. I think Florida State wants out. I think Virginia Tech wants out. I think a lot of schools want out. So the biggest question, because... Like, I'm okay. So let me put it like this I think this is a shoe in, personally. I think Clemson is going to the SEC. I, agree. I think that's I a shoe in. I think of pretty much any moves that would go to either the Big Ten or the SEC, Clemson seems like the, like the betting odds. I, I don't think Clemson would be welcome in the Big Ten for for number for nope. a number of reasons. I don't think Clemson Zero. it would be welcome in the I Big Ten. I, I don't see it. Like no, I, I I do not see it at all. Both from both from a um, it's 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 a the school it's a cultural the school, issue. The schools that the Big Ten looks at in terms of academics, in terms of their research facilities. AAU yeah, Clemson not does being, not check any boxes. Not being formed as a slave owning institution, which is Clemson was literally founded by Civil War rebels. Uh, you know, it's it's not a it's not a it's not an institution with a good history. Um, I also think, for what it's worth, I think Miami. Although here's the thing, my people generally have a ha 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 Miami has people who don't know any better for some reason, just assume that Miami has terrible academics, which is not true. It's a fantastic academic institution. I think it's because it's in Miami, because of some of the reputations that some of the football teams had that people think of it as a party school. It's not true. It's it's an incredibly good university. Um that being said, I still see them as an SEC school. I see Miami as an SEC school. Kyle? I would agree with that, too. Yep, I would agree. Yeah, very expensive. It's a private... Uh, again, I don't know if people... I feel like most people don't know this. That's a private school. Miami's not a state school. It is a private school. It's very expensive. It's very prestigious. I, I, don't, for, I think it's because their football teams have had, like, the opposite reputation... The people don't realize what the school is, which is said is kind of a hoity-toity so, private institution. Compared, compared to like a lot of other universities that's that's on here, it's not that big. It's only like 19,000. Yeah, it's, it's also not. Yeah, it's also not like 
a huge university. Although 19 is still bigger than like, I think TCU. TCU is pretty small. Um, but yeah, I think the ACC starts to fall apart. Now, for a lot of these ACC schools, I think the options look like go to the Big Ten, go to the SEC, get left behind, go to the Big 12. Um, but but obviously the first, any any of these institutions, their first choice, listen, this is the big two. We are on a rocket ship. We are on a train track, a rocket ship on a train track, a high speed rail towards the big two. Eventually, all of the power are going to be concentrated into the Northern Conference and the Southern Conference, into the Big Ten and into the SEC. We're on these rails. You're going to want to be in one of these two institutions, period. Now, Clemson and Miami both feel like SEC schools to me, and it doesn't even kind of feel all that close, to be honest. I think... And I know for a fact, I know for a fact that the conferences wanted these teams, that the, com excuse me, the conference wanted these teams, but Fox wasn't willing to like pony up the bucks for him. But with the end of the TV contract, the conferences might have a little bit more freedom. The conference might have a little bit more freedom to do what they want. Ohio, Ohio State, the Big Ten is going to complete their Western swing, bringing in two of the best, one of the best private universities in the country and what is typically ranked one of, if not the best public institution in the country. I'm of course talking about Stanford and Cal. Yeah. If, if the big 10 can grab Cal, like that is like the Holy grail to them in terms of just, and Stanford. Well, yeah, but yeah, Stan Stanford as well. But I was I was talking more about Cal regarding to all of the the academics, the research that's all behind all of the Cal locations. Like that is that yeah. is the top cherry. That but also, if, like if, if you think about the Big Ten, can bring them in. If you think about like all of the tech revolution we've had in the past few years, so much of that's come out of Stanford. Um, yeah. So yeah, just yeah, no, I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying yeah, yeah. to downgrade about all the things that Stanford did, has done, but like Cal speaks for itself of what. But, and they also what, um, that university's done. But they also bring in they solid they help solidify California for the Big Ten. You know, the Big Ten has UCLA and USC holding down Southern California. This brings in Central California, the Bay Area. You know, you bring yep. in Cal and Stanford. Now you have Central California on lock. Yep, and, and you got Cal. You got you got of all California then. Right. I mean, you have and you have two of the you have the two Cal institutions that are FBS teams in UCLA and Cal. There are like five other big Cal campuses, but uh, I don't believe any of them are FBS. So. Um, but yeah. That feels like a lock. Now, here, here's where things get a little bit more up in the air. Before you do that, let's take a quick ad break. Okay. Um, we, we covered we covered the more obvious ones, so we're going to take a we're going to take a quick ad break. So head on over to this the sloopcast.com where you can find all of our links to all of our different uh, websites, such as our YouTube page, YouTube.thesloopcast, or if you want to join our Discord server and get to Talk daily with Jared and I and all of our other Sloop Cats as well. Head on over to discord.thesloopcast.com. Or if you want to um, get away from all of these ads or support us, head on over to patreon.thesloopcast.com and become a patron. Uh, only $3 a month. Um, some great benefits there. And you're supporting Jared and I to continue doing thing, uh, continue to uh, doing our Sloop, our Sloop Cast podcast here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick ad break here and we will be right back. I just want to address something real quick because I know there's someone out there watching who maybe isn't familiar with. We've done this several times 
This is just our latest in the predicting of conference realignment. I so this one, and you can go look up the YouTube video if you don't believe me. Kyle and I predicted USC and UCLA to the Big Ten 11 months before it happened, before the news broke. Just throwing that out there for some cred. Like, we've been real spot on with these predictions in the past. Just want to toss that out there. Now, now that I've boosted our confidence a bit, Florida State and Georgia Tech. Of all of the ACC teams who I think will leave the ACC for greener pastures, and I think both of these teams are worthy mm. to go into either the Big Ten or the SEC. These are the two teams, in my opinion, that actually fit in either conference. Yeah, I think Georgia Tech... Of those two, I think Georgia Tech makes sense more to the SEC. I agree, just because you 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 do you do have that you do have that in state rivalry with Georgia. There, you got all the history between those two schools. And let's uh, not I forget just, that that's I, the I think, I, that's the University of Atlanta, which is what the SEC calls home. Like yeah, that 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 is true. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if Georgia Tech went to Big Ten? Went to the Big Ten? Yeah. <laughs> and and the Big Ten had the institution of the city of Atlanta, mm-hmm. which is the unofficial home of the SEC. Or maybe the official home of the SEC, actually. Like, I feel like the SEC needs to do that defensively just to stop the Big Ten from doing it. Now, Florida State, mm-hmm. again, I feel like it could go either direction. And again, if you follow conference realignment or have listened to any of our episodes about conference realignment in the past, there's a thing out there called the AAU. It's a prestigious membership that universities attain. Every single Big Ten member, except for Nebraska, although Nebraska was a AAU member when they joined, but they've since been removed, but when they joined the Big Ten, they were members of the AAU. Only only sixty nine in the in the um, United States. Only sixty nine uh, universities are in this. Uh, and, this and, and, and take group. and take your sports hats off for a second, because a bunch of those universities are little tiny pri- private schools who don't have sports programs, who definitely don't have football programs. Like if you go through that membership, mm-hmm. those aren't all football teams. Like. There's a bunch of tiny Tufts. private Tufts, Tufts is, University is a great is a great example. So um, Caltech, one of the many Cal's. I bet all I bet all the major Cal branches are in there. Um, point is, is that it's almost a prerequisite to be an AAU member to join the Big Ten. Florida State not currently an AAU member, but from my understanding, they uh, they applied the last time. They there were open applications and they like just barely missed. And I feel like the Big Ten USF is, as is Miami, there. as is Florida. Like there are a bunch of Florida universities there that, that Florida State isn't. But I, I think Florida State will get in probably the next time they try to get in. And and I think Florida State is a big enough brand and a big enough football powerhouse traditionally speaking they're not having a good year this year but you can't let recency move you but realize utah is yeah utah is yeah um florida state i think is the one school out there right now that the big 10 would make an aau exception for i always used to say that was notre dame but notre dame has since joined the aau um, Kyle, Florida State can go either way. I want to state that this is one of my least confident picks I have. Florida State could go either way. That being said, I think I'm going to place them in the Big Ten. And what's the reason behind that, Jerry? I think they are, I think they want in on the academics.
FSU playing their way out of the SEC contention? Uh, maybe. I Okay, I keep talking about academics. And again, if you don't follow, if you haven't listened to our past episodes about conference realignment or you don't follow like the intricacies of conference realignment, you might not know this. The Big Ten, as a conference, makes most of his money, not from football, not from TV, not from basketball, from research grants. When I keep talking about academics, I'm not being a hoity-toity legends and leaders Big Ten snob. The Big Ten, as a conference and as an academic share, they and a research share. The Big Ten is also an academics conference. It's also a conference that shares all of its research data with its members. They I mean, make I mean the b -b -b billions, hundreds of billions of dollars a year in research grants. This is where the Big Ten makes its money. So you're like, oh, I don't want Stanford. Oh, I don't want Cal. I'd rather have Clemson. I don't care about the Civil War and slavery and all that. Well, the, the university presidents and the university boards want Stanford and Cal because research money. Because research money, which destroys football money, just from a pile of cash standpoint, it's not even a competition. So this isn't me being hoity-toity, look at us, we're the Big Ten, we care about academics. No, this is this is about money. Let, let's be, let's, let's just be real. It's not about the glory of the student athlete. It's about money. Mm -hmm. It's about research money. It's about research grants from the government and from Lord knows who else. Well, let's look at, let's look at the uh, other side of, I think of that, this coin here with, with to Florida answer, State. To me, that is why Florida State would want to be, I, I think would choose the, if, if given the option would choose the Big Ten. Well, let's look at the other side with the Big, Big Ten here. Why would the Big Ten? Spikes, a Florida resident the, agrees with me. Why, why would Florida or why would the Big Ten um, want to have uh, Florida State as part of their their conference here? As as what we've been seeing recently here, where Florida State's like, yeah. like right, right, having 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 a fit with their current conference and saying we want more money and this and that. Who, who's to say that they if they join the Big Ten they would say the same thing? So you could have asked the same question about Texas and the SEC. Texas has historically, um, depending upon how you feel yes. about the current state of the Big 12, destroyed two conferences by leaving them. Well, the difference here in both Texas and Florida State's case is that they are no longer the big fish. They're no, they no longer have that kind of sway. If Florida State said, take it or leave it, we're going to leave... The Big Ten would just and tell them to leave. The, the SEC would do the same thing to Texas. The te Texas could pull its weight in the Big 12. Texas can't pull its weight in the SEC. They are no longer the biggest fish in the pond. The Big Ten existed before the Florida State. It'll exist after Florida State. And say the same thing about SEC in Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly the what it was. There was a report a couple of months ago about there. There's, I think it might have been like Sports Illustrated or or somebody that there was a report saying that neither again currently right now, and of course things can change in a year or or two or four. Currently, like both the SEC and Big Ten is like we don't we don't want Florida State. Obviously, that can change, but I can't I can't remember exactly what it was that came from that. From that report, though, but it's just, it's just something just something to keep in mind. I listen. The Big Ten also said it wouldn't poach the big from from the Pac-12. <laughs> so. Speaking of Notre Dame, because we were talking about Notre Dame, I, I think the day is coming where they must 
finally given. And I swear, and there's, I there's have... no other conference that that makes sense. There is no other conference that makes sense. I thought to, I had um, a Big Ten logo here for the me. for Notre Dame to to join a conference here, especially with the ACC um, not being or ultimately not being the type of conference that they're historically have been. Notre Dame is not going to go to the SEC, so the the Big Ten is left here for for uh, Notre Dame. Exactly. Um, hold on. All right, Notre Dame, and, and I kind of think they make a show of it too. Where, of course, yeah, like the no- Notre Dame will join like with Stanford and with Cal and with Florida State, and it'll be like. Look at us. This is our big move. And, you know. Again, we're moving towards a a semi-pro league. We're moving towards a Big Ten versus SEC and North versus South semi-pro football league. This is this is the rail we're on. You can not like it. I have my issues with it as well. We're not talking about what we want. We're talking about what's going to happen. And this is what's going to happen. And eventually... You're either going to be a part of the Big Ten and the SEC or you aren't. And Notre Dame will eventually have to make that calculation. And they're not going to join the SEC. They're way too pretentious and stuck up to join the SEC. And who doesn't love a pretentious stuck up school more than the Big Ten loves a pretentious stuck up school? Yeah, they'll fit right in. It'll be fine. Okay, Kyle, let's continue to destroy the ACC. Yeah, and looking and looking what's left here, and knowing the type of schools that Big Ten looks for here, looking at academics, you're looking at research here. And and of course, like expanding the the footprint of the of the Big Ten as well. So going down further south here, trying to reach a little bit more. Georgia Georgia Tech would have been nice to have a footprint in Atlanta, but you know, yeah. go east a go east a little bit and hit up the triangle. Yeah. And hit up uh UNC and Duke, just a few miles apart from each other, but two but, but great un- research institutes. But unfortunately, not Wake or NC State. <laughs> Sorry, Wake and NC State. But Wake's not in the triangle, but yes. Not not that, they're State. not that far away. It's it's about it's about good two two and a half hours away. It's just like saying, oh, but Toledo's there, Jared. Toledo's there. Ohio's not that big either. Um, <laughs> and I think this is it for the Big Ten. I think this this is where we end the Big Ten, at least for the twenty thirty prediction. Now you might be wondering, what about the SEC? Kyle, I think the, I don't know if the SEC is going to try and go team for team with the Big Ten. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're pretty happy with 16 right now, even though the Big Ten has 18. Right, but they also, ha- but they're also in an arms race. Let's be honest, they're also in an arms race. Yeah, they are. I mean, they running they out of schools, they're running out of schools to try to go more north. So I think I think they would need to look more west as well. I think I think they ultimately look more west for their um for their the schools that they want to. They've been having success with Texas A and M and Texas and Missouri and Oklahoma to uh to come over to the SEC. So, so do we want to add another Oklahoma and another Texas school? I think Wait, looking at the te- looking at the sense. teams that's left, definitely I I could see definitely TCU, but what's what's the case with Oklahoma State, Jared? I think they've been a very consistently good football program. I don't I don't know if the SEC cares about anything other than that. Quite frankly, Not basketball. Basketball is basketball is nice to have. Not I'm sorry, Kansas? no. Not Kansas. 
I don't think I don't. I'm sorry. Basketball doesn't even hit the meter on this. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, I I do think TCU to help solidify their hold on Texas. And I think Oklahoma, I'm not going to like go to bat for Oklahoma State, but I do think it makes some bit of sense. It stays in the footprint. I don't think the SEC wants to expand their footprint all that much. Um, additionally, I do think maybe they go a tad bit north and go get Virginia Tech. Mm. Thoughts on Virginia Tech and the SEC? I don't know. That's that's a really good. I never really thought too much about Virginia Tech. I know we kind of threw them out there as a possible SEC team, but I don't know. I'm. I know the Big Ten wouldn't want them. No. And if they, I know they they've had some good years, especially in the two thousands. Um, but if per what you were saying, where they, they need have an good, Auburn good, feel have, to them, be good in Virginia Tech or be good in uh, football. I don't, I don't see Virginia Tech though. Okay. Um, I, I, I think again, I think the SEC has its pick of anyone on the board except for the Big Ten. Do you see a better fit? Because I do think if you look at the board right now, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have 21 teams, which is three less for the SEC than we have for the Big Ten which is currently sitting at 24 teams. Um, now, I don't think that they necessarily Let's, needs to match the Big Ten team for team, but I do think they at least need to get up to an even number. I could see it being 22 and 24. I mean, if you want someone who's been good at football, especially recently, and they have, and they want to kind of expand their footprint a little bit there, I don't know how much they want to expand their footprint, wait, though. Wait, wait, why not NC State? Why not NC State? I think you overvalue NC State because of where I, you I, live. I, I know. I know. <laughs> Look at Spikes. Look at what Spikes said. I know. Um, Listen, what about NC what, State? What about Pitt? I, I, I like NC what about State. Pitt? NC State's going to go to the Big 12. As, as I, is Pitt. I, I, that, that, that makes sense. The... NC State going to the Big 12 makes more sense than the SEC. I, I would agree with that. Yes. That's what's going to happen in my, and by the way, this is, you got this really good like Appalachian thing going here where you got West Virginia, you got Pitt, yeah. you got Cincinnati, you got NC State, like. Just th throwing, throwing Appy State in there, throwing App State. Uh, we might get the Appy right. State. We might get the Appy State later. Um <laughs> But SEC team, Kyle, I think we need one more SEC team. My vote was for Virginia Tech. I, I don't think, I don't see Pitt personally. We could have a conversation about UCF. We could have a conversation about. What about Colorado? I don't think they want to go that far west. I don't see them going any further west. Then I know we we, Texas we had or talks Oklahoma. about we we had talks about like Arizona. Once upon a time ago, I saw Arizona as a possible Big Ten team, and if things keep expanding beyond what we currently see here, I I wouldn't rule that out. But I'm not going to put it in my 2030 prediction. I, I think the play I, is I Virginia Tech. I know they've been struggling recently. 
but they have a good history. They have good recruiting territory. It's a little bit of expansion. I think it makes sense. Okay. All right. I, I can't think, I can't think of any look, looking at the list here. I, I can't think of any, any teams. So. Now we've already moved. Well, that's the sec. Now that we've finished off the sec, um, let's take another quick ad break. Uh, we'll be right back after these ads. See you then. All right, Kyle, we're back from the ads. ACC is looking pretty desperate right now. Big 12 mm -hmm. has lost a couple teams. We've already moved a couple the, the other... ACC teams back uh, into the Big 12 with uh, Pitt and NC State. I think we should think... also move Louisville. Well, before you do that, I think one last thing before we move there that I just thought of. We did have them in the Big Ten um, once upon a time, too. If Florida State doesn't pan out and it would and, be Virginia, uh, they go back to and they go back to Indy, uh, Independence and all that. Virginia, I would say yeah. Virginia would be like right there with Florida State to I agree to go to the Big Ten. If Florida State ends up going to the SEC, I think you know if we did an alternative version, you know we could take Virginia Tech. I mean, I'm going to put this back, but you put like Virginia Tech into the Big Twelve. You put Florida State into the SEC, and then you put Virginia, which from a purely football standpoint is a is a big downgrade for the Big Ten. But from an academic standpoint is a big win for the Big Ten. Um, I, I so that it, so in in a alternate scenario in which it's Florida State to the SEC instead of the Big Ten, I think that's how that shakes out. But I'm putting it back. Um, Louisville to add to this good, like appy territory thing that the big 12 is working on. I think you had Louisville in there as well. Right. I, I can see that. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. Now the ACC is pretty devastated. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're going to have to pull in a lot of, you're going to have to pull in five a lot teams. of teams from the, uh, um, well, I'm drawing a blank on these, uh, the, these conferences here. The American Conference, the Sunbelt Conference, yep. the MAC. Yep, those are the two. The, those are the two. American and Sunbelt. You probably might, might, might have talked about some Conference USA teams. I, th I think the ACC will try to maybe still try to go to their their roots of being a coastal conference. Okay. I mean, so I, I, I think I they will try that as well. I mean, they've kind of already screwed, even in this alignment that we currently see in which they've lost some of their expansions, such as Stanford and Cal, mm -hmm. they still have SMU, which is outside of the coastal footprint. But yeah, I, I do agree with you where I, Coastal Carolina. I, I don't think they're going to have to dig that so, deep. So, but maybe going to going to what you were saying about with Georgia Tech being in, in Atlanta, home of the SEC. Yeah, ACC's home to home is North Carolina. Well, you Charlotte, to be. Charlotte. I am yeah, maybe sure. Uh, Charlotte, uh, Charlotte. The Charlotte 49ers? Mm hmm Yeah. So I agree. I'm gonna pull in a lot of teams like Charlotte, uh -huh. East Carolina, App State. You you add in a lot of those North Carolina schools into the ACC. I think Coastal Coastal Carolina makes sense as well, too. I think I can see Coastal Carolina being in the ACC as well. I didn't have Coastal Carolina. <laughs> I didn't have Coastal Carolina in the in the Photoshop to to begin with. Um, I don't I don't currently have that logo loaded, although I could certainly grab it. Mm -hmm. um, Even though Coastal Carolina is in South Carolina, but still, well, details. It's close. It's those close. Are details. 
just hop back over to this screen real quick and then back over to this screen and uh and then while, while you're at it too i we could kind we of could talk about a coastal carolina close, i don't i don't know if i'm close sold to on a that, though. I'm gonna put close coastal to carolina around, for right now close to around the the center of charlotte north carolina move on over to uh memphis tennessee and pick up pick up memphis as well Memphis, I think, is a is an excellent addition. Um, in fact, no, they, those are those are kind of just the off the top of my head what I think the ACC would go after. And I it wouldn't surprise me. I had oh, there we go. Wouldn't surprise me if they grab grab some other grab some other teams there, like. I wouldn't also wouldn't be surprised to see the Big 12 grab Memphis personally. But yeah, I, I, I do think ACC for now. I think it depends on how big the Big 12 wants to grow personally. Yeah, but I, I think Memphis could end up in either. And if given the choice, you're going to want to go to the Big 12, I think. All right, Kyle, I have some other options for the ACC. I'm just yeah, I'm just looking at how do other- you. How These do you feel conference. about the South Florida Bulls? Ooh, trying to go, trying to go down south. You you lose you lose quite a bit of you lose all of your Florida presence. You lose all of it, and then you try to gain some of it back. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I mean, from a recruiting standpoint, it makes sense to try and keep some sort of footprint in Florida. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. You want to stay North Coast? What's that? You want to stay? You want you want to try a North Coast team? How about Navy? A North Navy and Army. Ooh, and a and a step ahead, Army. Hmm. And hey, we're 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 still we're trying to maintain a an a a North and a South along the coast. Let's go to yeah, but Temple. Why don't we? Why don't, why don't we have a yeah, conversation? I was say, why don't we Temple? head up the coast? Why don't we head up the uh, the Gulf as well as we're Ooh. at it? Then we we could hit up the Gulf. Like you could um, have like I don't know if UAB right there. Well, it's not really on the on the coast, but out and you head on over to Alabama. You pick up UAB, maybe. Maybe um, you could pick up. Uh, Tulane, the Green Wave, as well, possibly. Tulane. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. To me, this is your ACC. Circa 2020, or excuse me, 2030. 14 teams. Yeah. Now you brought up Coastal Carolina. I think that is totally possible. So we'll throw that, we'll throw Coast Carolinas maybe in there as well. Okay. Um, and I think that I'm going to make one additional addition, one additional addition. Sure. One additional addition uh, to the big 12. And we're going so to the- grab Tulsa. Tulsa for the big yeah, 12. Yeah, t- Tulsa. Yeah. Now, Kyle, we have the what is what we currently refer to as the big four filled out. I mean, as we talked about at honestly, the beginning of the show. I, go ahead. I would say also just for the Big Twelve, don't don't rule out uh UTSA as well. I think I, I, I think, think that's UTSA a good makes makes sense as well. I, I think that's a I think UTSA needs to get better. But hey, maybe in it, maybe by twenty thirty. I mean, they've done pretty well recently, Jared. They've done really well. Looking back at, I'm just pulling up real quick. In 2021, they were 12 and 2. 2022, 11 and 3. Last year, 9 and 4. A little, little down step from um, the last two years, but. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, certainly. I think that's, if I had the, if I had the logo already in Photoshop, I'd, I'd, I'd throw it up there for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. um uh, is that 
Spike says uh, UCF's main rival is USF, so maybe USF to the Big 12. I mean, again, if yeah. you have an option, I think you want to go to the Big 12. So yeah. we could we could look at that formation for sure. We could look at this formation instead. But as we all unfortunately have seen play out on numerous occasions, rivalries don't unfortunately don't typically mean all that much when it comes to conference realignment. Although I will say in the current prediction we have rolling right now, we have Pitt and West Virginia back in the same conference again. And it is someone from Eastern Ohio right on the border of, of West Virginia where I grew up getting Pitt and West Virginia back in the same rivalry or back in the same conference would make a yep. lot of people happy. Yep. That makes sense. Now, Kyle, we have our power four filled back out. And as we talked about at the top of the show, we need to get the Pac-12 up to at least eight teams. As of 2027, they'll be back up to six. I think there's a lot of great options. I have built, if you're willing to, okay. if you're willing to play with me here, I have built great options. Fun, fun options. I have there built, you go. <laughs> I have built what might be at least a pretty fun Pac-12, or the Pac, as I'm now calling it, because. It's the PAC. It sounds better. So the PAC state. Add in Utah state. Add in Utah state. Let's, let's. Are you, you let's, want to try and guess the teams? Let's add them in here. You want to try and guess the teams? <laughs> um, Utah I'm, state is in fact, if I can find them, there they are. A part of my prediction. San Diego state. I'm, I'm just going through some San, of these co conferences here. San Diego State was the, one of the teams announced for 2027. Not San Diego State. I'm sorry. Um, uh, San Jose State. Sorry. San, Jose San Jose State, State, State is a part of the prediction. That's Spikes, he might need some help. Out, you you might you might want to help him out. <laughs> I'm running out of states. Don't, don't limit yourself just to, to, to just state teams. You're not going to win doing that. <laughs> However, right. there are two you know, powerhouse. Teams have, there are two powerhouse teams, have, teams that are states. So let's let's look at their the, powerhouses. At they're the, states and they're available. Yeah, I'm looking at the Mountain West here. Uh, Fresno. Uh, no, Fresno. Kyle, I'm Fresno dropping State you some said. incredible hints right now, and I need yeah. you to listen. There are two powerhouse teams that are both states and they're and they are available spikes i don't I, I i i do you know what i'm talking about he does not kyle do you do do, do you want to you want to take you want to think about it or do you, do you want me to reveal it they are powerhouse football teams powerhouse you're not talking about fcs to schools. That's right. North North Dakota State there said that they were wanting there. to go up. North Dakota he State wanted to. North Dakota State Bison. There's one more, Kyle. And if you're going down this route too, might as well do South Dakota State. South then. Dakota State Jackrabbits. Hey, we're 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 keep we're keeping this the pack state. This is it. <laughs> final. This is the final right here. <laughs> It is not. We got 10 teams. Is it 10? Uh, yeah, 10 teams. The Pac-10 is back. The Pac-10, and they're all state. Uh, that, that, that's fun. Nail Ky it. Kyle. Right here. I, I know you're having fun. I have four more teams. <laughs> oh, you can kind of see, Kyle, look, look, at, look at the screen. You can kind of see where four, actually five? No, it's, it is four. Uh, four additional teams. There are still spots open for. All right, all right. All right, let me let me go back to other other conferences. I, I will say that those so, are the last of the FCS schools. So I'm going I'm going back to the I'm going back to the Mountain West. Uh, That's probably a good place. UNLV, to look. UNLV, N L V is on the board. Um, two other ones that come to come off to the top of my mind here, maybe not so much powerhouses, 
but definitely known. Uh, I mean, we're Wyoming. running. Kyle says Wyoming. The Cowboys are on the board. Um, I don't think I don't think why would be no that, that, that uh, that's that's expensive for that air force air force is on the board all right i don't see anybody else from the from the mountain west here uh you you did say them um but you said no to them so maybe you're just not going to be happy with this answer but you did in fact say nevada mm. okay Kyle, not, not, that that is that's everybody that's everybody from the Mountain West, Jerry. Yeah, the Mountain West is Hawaii. Dead. The Mountain West except is except for Hawaii. Good, sorry, Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> listen, I don't even think they want to be a state anymore. So, you know, this might be their first leap towards independence. I, 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 maybe I, I, I like the first ten, Jared. I, I like I liked the theme that we had going. <laughs> the Pack State. The Pac-10 state. No, we're, we're just going to call them the Pac now. I've already decided this. I've talked to their marketing department, which is an intern committee made up of a student from Oregon State and a student from Washington State. Um, Another th state. This is a fun conference. So Jared. <laughs> I'd watch these games. I would watch these games. Now, Kyle, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lay this out, but if the ACC was smart after they got their shit kicked in by the big 10 and the SEC rating them and before the big 12 started stealing their schools, if they were smart They'd call up the Big 12 and say, you want to merge? Want to merge? You want to be one conference? Will they be smart enough to do that? I don't know. Will they consult me? No, no one's called yet. But to me, I, I'd actually already be making these phone calls. Just calling the Big 12 and being like, listen, once our media rights deals end, if not sooner... We're going to lose, at the very least, we're going to lose Florida State and Clemson and Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech. We're going to be dead. You've got some good teams. We've got some good teams. Let's become the ACC 12 or the big ACC or... Here's a question, and I don't I don't want this to happen, and I know we're running out of time. I don't want to see this happen because everybody loves this, loves this conference so dearly, especially as the season goes on and we get to see get to see these teams play during the weekdays. Is there any any thought or any discussion about our beloved Mac teams? I think, yeah. Don't take away our Maxions. I know. I, I I agree. I agree. I agree. I'm just saying. If listen, I love the Mac. Uh, this is an Ohio kid. I, I think. I think almost every college football fan loves the Mac. It's, when was the last time you even heard about a Mac uh, since Marshall left? Which has been a long time at this point. When was the last time you heard of a Mac team being rumored to be going somewhere else? I'll wait. You don't. You simply don't. And here's the problem. We could point it like, oh, look, Ohio was really good for a few years. Oh, look, Northern Illinois is kind of good right now. Oh, look, Toledo's kind of good right now. Th this is every Mac school. This is every single Mac school. Hey, look, we're kind of good right now. Like dominating. Like crushing our competition in the Mac. Their coach gets hired. And then that team goes right back down into the gutter. There aren't any good programs in the Mac. 
there are teams that do really well until their coach leaves and then return back into the. Um, I'm trying to be nice. You understand what I'm saying? I, yeah. Bottom line, don't take our don't take our, don't take our Mac, away. Mac conference. Don't don't rip them. Don't rip them up. Don't take our Mac away. Um, mm -hmm. Now, that being said. Maybe the Mac can grow. Because, and again, I'm not going to map this out. We do not have time for it. N nor did I build the map in Photoshop beforehand. But if this plays out, Conference USA is dead. The American is dead. The Sun Belt is dying. Like, all of the group of fives... But these teams, the Mountain West is extra dead. Look at all these teams that left all of these other conferences. If you're the MAC and you're the only stable group of five in town, maybe you're calling some of those leftovers. Maybe you're making some phone calls to Middle Tennessee State. I'm, I just, that, that one made geographic sense. That's why I brought up that one specifically. Just geographically makes sense. All right. You see what I'm saying? I see that. So yeah, yeah. you're the one stable conference in town. You can make some strategic additions. Just saying. All right. I, I think we should end it there, Jared. Well, I'm just, I just <laughs> want to point this out. The Big 12 was dead. It was dying. It was dead. And yet it's going to come out on top of the ACC because ironically, because it got picked apart before the ACC got picked apart, it was able to go out and get the cream of the crop of American, uh, uh, you know, American teams and Conference USA teams and Sun Belt teams. And they put together a really good conference with with UCF and with, you know, uh, they put together a pretty fun conference is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, and they, they, they had spots available to pick up the remnants of the PAC 12 and the PAC 12 fell apart. So they get the Arizonas, they get Colorado. Um, them getting picked apart earlier in the process, adding Houston, adding UCF, adding Cincinnati, Put them in better position to, like I said, add a bunch of these really good teams before the ACC even know they had it to add to any teams. And I think you might see something similar with the Mac. Because they're not as pretty, they don't have the, the high-end teams like the other group of fives do. They'll be the last stable gal in town. Maybe not the prettiest gal in town, but she's stable and your mom likes her. That's the Mac. I, I don't know what that is supposed to be. All right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? You good now, Jared? Are you good now, Jared? You I that delivered. That? that was a really good ending. And it was really funny the way I called the Mac, the stable girlfriend that your mom likes, that was funny. It was <laughs> worth it. And I was willing to end on it. it. The Mac is the girl next door who gives you some action. I don't know what that means. Kyle, do you anything in Kyle's corner? I do not. This, this week, this week four is going to be, lot better than week three in terms of yeah, games a low I, think, bar. Uh, it is, it is, I think it's as low of a bar as you can get for this season hopefully yeah that the, the penultimate week is always some, a snoozer too supposed supposed to be some supposed to be some good games uh in week four here so i think i think there's quite a few i think there's quite a few um rank on rank teams if i if i recall here at least like four or five at least, maybe more. So. Four or five rank on rank games is pretty good. Yeah, Illinois, Nebraska. Yes, both are ranked. 
Yeah, uh, Big Ten. US, USC and Michigan. More Big Ten. Uh, Utah, Utah and Oklahoma State. Tennessee and Oklahoma. Those are okay. your rank on rank teams this week. This will be some fun games. We are we, we kind of already know what the slew picks are. Yeah. I mean, you what you just named five. Ohio State has to be the seventh. So we just need to pick one more. And that's your slew picks. Mm-hmm. Spikes, you want to do the slew yeah. picks this week? We don't have anyone lined up. I feel like you want to do the slew picks this week. And I feel like that we just sold you that it's a really good lineup. And I don't think you have a spot yet. Do you want to do the slew picks this week? <laughs> hmm. Listen, you don't have to answer right now. Right now, I need to end the show, however. Tonight's ending music is, uh, once again, a band who I believe is from Ohio, but I'm not 100% sure, but they are signed to an Ohio-based record label. Uh, The name of the band is Younger. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, the name of this band is Younger.